What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun and uh, we're going to install my battery switch that I picked up for the Integra. Um, so, for those of you that don't know or may have known, if you follow my Instagram, um, I installed a Odyssey battery up in the front passenger side of my um, bumper area. And due to a bad main relay, it actually created like an open circuit and it drained my battery and basically killed that battery. So instead of me going out and buying another $200 battery, I decided to just use my factory battery and relocate it to the trunk. Well, the problem with doing that is whenever you go to the drag strip, you have to, if any battery that's relocated other than the factory original spot you have to encase it in a battery box. So if you haven't checked out my last video, my brother fabbing this up for me, uh, go check that out now. And, um, or I'll tag it in the end of this video so you guys can uh, click on that and watch it. But we built this battery box from scratch. I already have it installed. I just drilled two holes in the floorboard and put my rods in there, bolted it all down, and everything's nice and solid and uh, works really well. So moving on. Uh, now, um, as far as NHR regulations, again, you have to install a battery switch on anything that's, uh, that's on anything that has a battery relocated other than the factory spot. So brings me back to saying that I got my battery switch and this is a plate that's on the back. Um, it was a little too, uh, wide cause of where I want to mount it on my Integra is right here on the corner. Um, just kind of like that. So it was a little too wide. It was sticking like down here on the bumper. So I just took my grinder and sanded it down or grinded a little piece off and then just drilled new mounting holes. And then I went to Lowe's and got some nice stainless steel hardware. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this battery switch up here and then, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tape it up, mount it where I want it. And I'm going to start to drill. So I'm going to drill the four holes for the mount, and then I will uh, go ahead and drill my center hole with a step bit, and I can mount my switch on the inside. So as you can see, it's going to mount really nice in there, hopefully. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll see if I can't hide that solenoid down in there and make sure it's not going to get in the area of my tail light or anything. Make sure my tail light's going to be able to bolt up, and uh, yeah. Alright guys, so I got my switch mounted where I wanted it. I went ahead and I drilled my holes, my four holes there, and then one big hole for that way uh, for the solenoid to pass through. Tighten it down, super solid. So that's all good. Now what I'm looking into is uh, running my alternator cable, because I'm going to have to run my alternator and, and uh, whatnot to this post here, and then run another cable from here to my actual positive post of my battery. Um, because for NHRA regulations, this has to sit in line with your positive terminal and not your negative <clears throat> And it actually has to kill the car whenever you go ahead and flip the switch off. So If uh, if I was to not have my alternator or anything hooked up to this post and I would just switch it off Yeah, it'll kill all the electronics in the car, but the alternator itself would still have a power source uh, Because it's up in the fuse box right now, and then that would actually just keep the car running so what I'm thinking about now, um, I have these as my power cables here that I had onto my terminal over there. This right here is for my main um, my main battery uh, power wire for my fuse box. This uh, other black wire that's smaller is my alternator, and then or actually is my starter, and then this is my fuel pump. So instead of you know, for a while I was contemplating on just getting another wire and then I'm having to run it all the way through my car. Well, I kind of thought that was a dumb decision because what if I just took this starter wire that I have here? Let me show you guys. I was thinking about just taking the starter wire. That's the big cable that runs to my battery. This is my alternator. So my alternator is sitting here. And what if I just flip flopped them? So. This runs all the way back into the car and back to the battery. This is my starter signal. Saying about just taking this cable and then actually just hooking it up to my alternator and then swapping my alternator cable to my starter. 
That way I don't have to run a whole extra cable and then I still get my starter signal because this is actually in line with the main power cable here. So even though it'll say alternator on the wire, it'll still actually be sending signal to the starter. So I think instead of just running a whole extra cable and having to go to the parts store and everything um, and spending money on that, I think I'm just going to flip flop them. Um, that way I really don't have to do much and uh, all I got to do is just unbolt it from my uh, solenoid on my starter Move that cable down to my alternator move my alternators uh, cable up to my starter and then boom I'm done. I don't have to do anything else But what I do have to do is go to the parts store and get some battery lugs or some uh, Some cable ends similar to like this here that way I can actually slide it over to my solenoid and then go ahead and I'm gonna have to drill <clears throat> another hole here and here uh, that way I can go ahead and pass my cables through and into the solenoid there I was thinking about cutting a big window but I don't really want to cut a big window um, I just don't want to have that much material missing right there and have a big gaping hole there so instead I'll just take my step bit and uh, drill a hole here drill a hole there and then run my cables to here and then uh, yeah, so I'll just put my main fuel pump. I'll put my fuel pump wire there, my alternator um, power there, and my main cable there. And then I will just put one cable from here to my post, and then that'll be the end of that. We'll be all done. So, yeah, I'm going to go to the parts store. I'm going to grab some battery terminals, and we'll knock that out. All right, so I got all, I got all my wiring and everything done to the switch. Um, let me pop the tail light back out so I can show you guys real quick. Oops, come on. There we go. Alright, so, like I said, I just ran, I just drilled two holes and I ran my cables in and out. I am going to go back and widen this out a little bit so that way the wires aren't really rubbing. It's pretty loose fit. Um, same with this one. So I'm not really too worried about it, but I will go back and make those holes bigger. Um, but... Uh, for now, you see here, if you turn the switch on. Everything comes on as it should, and then when you can turn it off. I don't know if you can see those wideband lights or not. Kills it. So, on, off. And then whenever I go ahead and uh, after I make those holes a little bit bigger for those cables, I'll come back and uh, put all my plastics and everything in, finish it all up, and should be good to go. And like I said, I did get my uh, battery or my wires swapped over here on the engine side. And if you're wondering why my turbo and stuff is off, it's because tomorrow I'm going to take my manifold to the shop. And I don't know if you all saw my uh, Dino Tune video of when this thing... Uh, got dyno tuned it put down 540 horse but i didn't have a dump tube on my wastegate so it was just blowing all of it over here i'm um, on the firewall that's why the firewall is a little discolored now but anyway so i'll get that handled tomorrow and we'll get a dump tube bolted on i'm just going to recirc my dump tube back into my downpipe uh just because for clearance issues and whatnot uh but yeah so i'm gonna go back drill these holes a little bit bigger and uh, put it all back together, throw the tail light back in, and uh, that'll be it for the switch install. So, and then when this video picks up, it'll be tomorrow when we're going to go weld the uh, dump tube onto the dump pipe. So, stay tuned. Alright guys, so I got my cables ran. I drilled my extra holes, and uh, this is kind of how I have it ran. So, I drilled an extra hole, or I drilled another hole there. Ran my cables through, drilled a hole there, ran my cable through, and I kind of just put tape on the two in the center that I drilled out that I didn't really need, which I'm not really a whole uh, lot proud of, but, uh, you know, at least it's uh, covered up. So I got it covered up, and uh, things all tightened down. And then I went ahead and I put in my interior. I just did a little hole there, ran my cable through, did a hole there, ran my cable through, and out the other side, just like that. So we, once I put all my plastics in it or anything, It'll, uh, it'll look pretty sweet, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I mean, it's not the 100% the best job in the world that I've done, but I think it came out pretty uh, pretty legit, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this battery cover on. 
which is a really, really tight fit by itself. And that's kind of like how my setup will look. And then put this plastic piece up over everything. just kind of sit like that and yeah obviously I have some nuts that go on top of this to hold the lid down but I mean I think it looks pretty good I'll pop this little plastic piece in real quick there there we go all nice and done everything's all the wires and everything are all ran Everything's all hooked up. And then once you put the tail light in there, you won't really be able to see anything. It'll be pretty all nice and tucked away. So once you put the tail light in, oops, if I can pick this thing up with one hand. Now we'll just kind of go like that. And there it is. Which, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Pretty decent. Um, now, all I gotta do is go get some rivets so I can clip this plastic piece down and that'll be in there and then, uh, yeah. But I mean, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It came out pretty sweet and uh, I mean, I think that's gonna do it for this video as far as the battery install switch goes. Um, because there ain't really anything else to show you guys. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward process. You know, it's not really too difficult or anything. So, but I mean, that's uh, that's pretty much it. So, if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, give it a thumbs up. Uh, getting likes and everything really helps out my channel, so I appreciate y'all doing that. You guys are doing a great job. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe for more content. So, as of right now, I got my turbo manifold, my downpipe and everything in the shop. I'm gonna get my dump tube and everything uh, welded into, I'm gonna get my dump tube from my wastegate welded into my downpipe, so it just kind of recirculates into the downpipe, and then it'll go up underneath the car. But, I try to clean as much as the uh, exhaust stuff off of the firewall with some simple green. And, I mean, I got most of it off. I mean, it's still discolored because of the heat, but I think once I put the manifold and everything back in, it'll look pretty good. I'm also going to go ahead and ceramic coat it black since I have it off. And, yeah, so here in about the next week or so, I'll do another video on giving you guys an update. And then we'll go ahead and take the car for a drive, hopefully for uh, first time on the street. Go to a car meet. Hopefully go get some runs in. So, anyways, guys, like I said, that's going to do it for this video. appreciate y'all watching. We'll freaking see y'all later.